news that New Zealand was likely to tighten up her rationing so as to spare more food for Britain made weekly review look out some pictures of the old country. The moral of this one seems to be that it's a long time before the British smoker meets his match. All the food sent to Britain has to go through her docks, so let's have a look at the dockers and stevedores. These men, several of them over 70 years of age, are members of a record-breaking gang. The leader is Killer Quinn. For years they have been fighting the U-boats by making quicker turnarounds, loading and unloading in days instead of weeks, hours instead of days. Here's a London butcher. He's carving off seven days' rations for one person from the meat brought ashore by the dockers. Stringent rationing has allowed every civilian in Britain one and twopence worth of meat once each week, right through the war years. Looks enough for Monday's breakfast. The sort of parcels our own New Zealand corner butcher has been making up during the same years have looked rather different. And this one was just for a weekend, not for a whole week. Up till now, there's been more meat walking about in New Zealand than the available ships could take away. So there's been plenty for local sale. Now here's a New Zealand picture of something you won't see in Britain, an outdoor tomato crop. All Britain's tomatoes were either hothouse or imported. And we'll bet Killer Quinn's hard-working gang haven't had a tomato to refresh them for many a long year. There have been dozens of shortages which Britain has had to bear and New Zealand hasn't. Here's another crop you won't see in Britain, another little thing which has helped to make life normal in wartime New Zealand. Nelson tobacco has been enough to prevent real shortage. Whereas Britishers, suffering from overwork and needing their tobacco, have had to hunt for a little of that rare and precious import. Anyone who can't get his usual 50 a day should put that in his kill and smoke it. During the war years, New Zealand civilians have suffered no strain so far, while even sitting down to tea has not been complete relaxation over in Britain. Britain, thanks to rationing, no one has starved. But in the Dominion, if we're to judge from the queue of bathing beauties, there hasn't been a single ounce of hunger for a whale of a long time. While we're on the beach, it might be interesting to compare this summer scene with a picture we've got of wartime weekend motoring in England. The people in Britain we think of first, though, are these war winners who have never owned a car in their lives. While these boys have been taking it, civil New Zealand has been saving her strength. Today, she has the stamina to go short of things for a while. As far as meat goes, there's a lot here that the people in the old country would like to share. Now that more ships are becoming available, New Zealand and Australia, by rationing themselves, can send a lot more good food to be landed and shared too by our friend Killer Quinn and his gang, and passed on to the millions like them. These people have been right out in front for a long time now, and we must send them all the food that the ships can handle. We want to see convoy after convoy of Anzac food going out from our reserve of strength to back up the people who have borne hardship for so long. To make such convoys, the price will be Anzac rationing.